G'day, Paul and Pauline here, sitting in the caravan. We were planning to spend Good Friday out on Lantana Station, west of Charleville in Queensland. But the coronavirus stopped all that. We couldn't travel, we couldn't take the caravan on any unnecessary journey. So we decided we'd have church in the caravan this morning for Good Friday. So we'll start with a song called the old rugged cross. Exchange it 
someday for a crown. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We were planning to go out to Lantana Station, 200 kilometres west of Charleville, for Easter. And on Good Friday, we were to be there in our caravan. But with the coronavirus and the big shutdowns all over the country, we've been banned from taking the caravan out. So we're in the caravan at home, in the shed, which is a bit sad. But we, we, we wanted to reflect on what Good Friday was all about. And so our Bible reading today it comes from Luke chapter 23 from verse 26. And Paul and I will read that. As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of the people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? And different commentaries on that particular word that Jesus said say different things, but one of them says it's a prophetic word about what the Romans would do to the temple in Jerusalem. Um, he says if they're going to do this to God's son when he's alive and bearing fruit and when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry, when the church is dry? And of course the Romans came 40 years later and destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. I'll get Paul in to read from verse 32. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which said, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. The death of Jesus. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon for the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this he breathed his last. The centurion seeing what had happened praised God and said, Surely 
this was a righteous man. When all the people had gathered to witness this sight, when they saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. That ends the reading from his holy word on this very special holy day. Thank you, Lord. Now we're going to sing uh, an old hymn called Near the Cross. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain free to all a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the Cross a trembling soul, love and mercy found me. There the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Help me walk from day to day with its shadows all. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. Hear the cross, I watch and wait, hoping, trusting ever. Till I reach the golden strand Just beyond the river In the cross, in the cross Be my glory ever Till my raptured soul shall find Rest beyond the river Thank you, Lord, for the cross. Thank you, Lord, that you went all the way to Calvary to carry all of our sins in your body to the cross. Lord God, we're so grateful for you, for shedding your blood for us. We we just love that you cared enough about us. You loved us so much that you died on that cross for us so that we might be reunited with our Creator. So Father God, on this Good Friday as we remember the terrible pain that you went through, the rejection, the alienation, the cursing, the spitting, the pulling of beard, the pulling of your hair, the whipping, the lashing. Oh Father, forgive us for our sins. Thank you for saving us and restoring us to our Creator, your Heavenly Father. 
This is a solemn day, Lord. This is a solemn day and we remember. We remember what you did for us. May your Holy Spirit continue to guide us and keep us close to you. Fill our hearts with your love, Lord, so that we can be a blessing to all those that we meet along the way. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Look at this entrance into Lantana. A crucifix stuck in the ground here to welcome visitors into the property. What did Paul say to the church in Galatian? He says, May I never boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ through which I have been crucified to the world and the world has been crucified to me. It's a strange symbol but only in the cross of Christ did we get salvation. Only through the death and burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ did we get reconciled to our Heavenly Father. And that's what we boast about. Nothing, nothing to do with us or our works, but we boast about what Jesus has done for us. It's all been done. He sacrificed his life so that he would open a doorway for us to be reconciled with our Creator. What a great symbol to put at your front gate. Lantana, Christian family, very, very faithful to the Lord trust in the Lord for all of their needs. Look at this almost desert land, very parched and dry and in need of rain, but they just trust God. He will provide all of their needs according to his riches in glory. And they put a cross here to say, quite boldly, quite boldly, we believe, we trust God and we follow the way of the cross. You have a great day now. You'll see you later.